Outside of the digital world, embossing refers to the process of pressing some kind of design on another surface to create a relief or three-dimensional image. The high-pressured pressing raises the surface, adding a new dimension to the original object. The imprint could be raised to another level or recede into the surface background. That is called debossing. Now you've seen both embossing and debossing many times before, not only in the world of paper scrapbooking, but also from credit cards to braille books for the blind, or notary stamps and wedding invitations. It's an elegant and varied printing technique. Matter of fact, the topic of embossing is so diverse that we're not going to open the door any further into the chamber of paper embossing secrets. Instead, we'll open the digital chamber and mimic the techniques of embossing using our photo editors. Let's get started. To recreate the techniques shared in this lesson, you'll need the following. Any solid paper from the class kit. This particular set of steps works best on solid colored papers or textured papers in a single color. You'll also want to open the Joy Word Art from the Creations Kit, cropped as such. Then open a new document and place the paper and drag and drop in the Word Art. Or you can start from a template and ignore the other layers until you get the look that you want. To understand embossing in Photoshop, we'll need to journey into the Layer Styles menu and familiarize ourselves with the options available to us under Bevel and Emboss. Double-click your Word Art layer in the Layers panel to open the menu. The first option available is the Style, separated into two types of effects bevels and embosses. The bevel effects transform the borders of an object into a chiseled hard edge. In contrast, the emboss options soften an object and support the illusion that the object rises out of or into the page. Now there are five options to choose from in the styles drop down. There are two bevels, outer bevel and inner bevel, and three embosses, emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss. Let's take a brief tour of those five options. Outer bevel adds a bevel outside the boundary of the layer, supporting the illusion that areas around the layer are raised off the background. Inner bevel places the bevel inside the layer boundary, making the layer contents look raised and dimensional. Emboss is somewhat similar to outer bevel, but the imprint looks softer and stamped on the underlying layers. Pillow emboss supports the illusion that the layer looks embedded or recedes into the layers underneath it. And finally, stroke emboss adds embossing effects to the layer's stroke, if there is one. As I mentioned earlier, debossing displays a receded print into the surface of the background. And that's actually the technique that I want to show you right now. Pillow emboss sounds just right. It supports the illusion that the layer is embedded or receding into the layers underneath it. So our first step is to apply a pillow emboss to our Joy Word Art.
So far, so good. Now we have all these additional options to consider. It's not so much a guessing game as it's a question of the type of look we want for our final piece. Let's take a look at the remaining options in the structure area of the bevel and emboss layer style. The technique allows us to fine tune the formation of the bevel, whether created with chiseling hard or soft or just smooth. Hard hugs the contours of the bevel edges, while smooth blurs the effect for a much more softer result. Soft, if you can believe it, is a compromise between the other two options. It produces a gentle effect, but not as soft as smooth. So right now, set the option for smooth. Depth specifies the shading contrast. Moving the slider to the right produces a high level of contrast and a deeper bevel. Sliding it to the left produces low contrast, shallow bevels. For my example, the value I'm using is 231. Direction is an easy set of radio controls. Selecting up makes the emboss effect appear raised. Down will make it appear indented. Stick with up for the time being. Size controls, you guessed it, the size of the bevel. Tiny letters means tiny emboss, so we'll set this value to 21. And finally, soft and smooth the chiseling technique even more with a touch of blurring. Bump this number up to 12. So far, our embossing effect doesn't look half bad. Our joy definitely looks pressed into the paper. We can think that pillow emboss for the deboss look, right? It looks cool, but we ain't done yet. I really want the words to look punched into the paper, like it was created from a die cut. And I don't want to see any color. Okay, let's fix the color now because that's simple. To fix that color, we need only to toggle the color overlay style option on. So still within the layer style menu, target the color overlay option. Then match the inset color picker to the paper color underneath. So we're going to sample that paper using the eyedropper. And it looks a bit better. Now it doesn't have to be an exact match for the color, but close enough. Ah, this looks more like it. Eh? Definitely looks like we've imprinted a die cut into the paper, but we still ain't done yet. I've got one more ace up my sleeve. We've got to adjust the shading. Head back into the bevel and emboss options and visit the shading area. So we kind of skipped over this area because honestly, the options here are a step above the basics. But two specific options are worth reviewing. The highlight and shadow modes make the emboss. Without them, the emboss simply would not exist. So I can reduce both of their opacities down and you will cease to see them. Now this is because the digital illusion of embossing relies on a balance of highlights and shadows to make objects appear raised or indented. Now here's the trick. We're going to replace screen with linear dodge add and the multiply with linear burn. The reason why we do this is because with screen and multiply, we just get lighter and darker colors based on the average intensity of the layer beneath it. Linear dodge and linear burn 
also produce lighter and darker results in the shading and the highlights. But instead of averages, it will base it off of the color channels in your layout. So within the emboss, my shadows will look darker and the highlights will look lighter, but also with a bit more red, consistent with the layer beneath it. If it were blue, it would produce a much better blue. And that, my dears, gives us an amazing result. <laughs> yeah, we just pulled the high ace out of the deck and won the game. Now, do the steps I've outlined work for other types of objects? <laughs> you betcha. I can click OK and take a look at what I've got. And then I can right click within the layer, select copy layer style. Well, let's paste the layer style to the big flower or the string or a photo area all give me the same type of look. The technique works across the board, but I really love to see it apply to text or brushes, the type of objects that will serve as background foundations to others. All right, I hope you'll recreate this look within your own holiday album.